uh, sustainability engagement manager in the university sustainability team. Um, so I'll be with you for about the next sort of half hour, 45 minutes, um, might be a bit quicker with a few of you. Um, so we'll see how we go. Um, but in this session, broadly, I'm going to talk a bit about, or you're going to help me talk a bit about what sustainability actually is. Um, I imagine you already got a pretty good understanding, so I won't dwell too much, but we'll just sort of make sure we're all on the same page with um, actually just what sustainability is in the first place. Um, and then we'll look a little bit about what goes on for sustainability at UOG and how you can kind of join in with that through your um, societies and sports teams. And uh, then we'll look uh, sort of a bit more broadly about how you can embed sustainability into your core, um, your core roles as societies and as sports teams. So I'm going to kick off with a bit of a, a question again. I'm going to just use the chat function um, uh, quickly. So hopefully you can all access that. Um, but the question really is, um, what do you think sustainability is? What comes to your mind when you think sustainability? Um, completely fine if you don't really know very much. If you could just pop a few off the top of your head thoughts in the chat, that would be really helpful. Um, green, oh, can we not talk? Okay. Uh, you can talk if you're all happy to talk. I mean, that's fine too. It might be helpful if I can see you and talk, if you're all happy to do that. Otherwise, feel free to use the chat, both is fine. Sorry, my camera's not working at the moment. I'm trying to fix it. Any thoughts in the chat? Top of your head. Very, just very quickly. What do you think sustainability is? Um, what comes to your mind? Maintain, keep going. Yeah, green, brilliant. Take maybe one more into the chat. Anyone else any thoughts? Okay, well, ah, oh, brilliant, okay, great. So yeah, you've got um, green there and you've got to keep things going and you know, both are very much um, part of what sustainability is, I suppose. Um, so there is a sort of a standardized definition. Sustainability is hard to define, but there is a definition um, out there from something called the Brundtland Report, which was written back in the late 1980s um, and the basic idea is for um, us to meet our needs today without compromising the ability of future generations to also meet their own needs. And that is about being able to keep things um, going, but keep things going in a way that future generations can also keep things going. Um, and, and what you put in there about being green, yes, that's absolutely something people often um, think about first when they think sustainability. They think of the environmental things, the protecting the planet, the climate change issues. Uh, those sorts of things. Uh, hello to somebody who's joining us. Hello, Josh. Um, I'm just going to show you quickly on my screen now um, something that just explains this a bit more. Bear with one second. Um, potentially, you can see this now. At least I'm hoping so. Um, so you should be able to see uh, two uh, two diagrams, one on the left, one on the right, um, but basically what these diagrams are saying is that um, sustainability is both environmental, it's social and it's economic. Um, so in the case of the environmental, that's the sorts of things people were saying when they're saying, you know, often be green, thinking about materials use, thinking about biodiversity, thinking about carbon emissions, but it's also stuff like the people side of things, equality and diversity, um, responsible products um, and then the finance side of those and the diagram on the right um, is probably even more accurate because it shows that actually these things are linked um, and at the moment I'm sure you know thinking about things like the um, coronavirus as an example obviously a very topical one um, it's arguable you know the virus started because of the human interaction with nature maybe not going quite right um, and then as a result of that, people have been unwell, there's health and wellbeing issues. And then as a result of health and wellbeing issues, there's economic issues. So all of these things are kind of linked in one big system. And that's kind of what the diagram on the right is um, showing. And then here we've got the Global Sustainable Development Goals. Um, so I wanted to introduce you to these quite early on as a visual. I imagine some of you will have seen these before. 
Um, but these are 17 things that the United Nations think that we all need to do by the year 2030 um, in order to be uh, sustainable. Um, and you can go onto the Global Goals website, I'll make sure that link's forwarded over to you afterwards. Um, and on there you can find all the kind of breakdown of exactly what these goals are about. Um, but they're a nice little hook into beginning to think about what this might mean in your society and sports team, because you can see here that yes, things like climate change are covered, but you've also got things like health and well-being, you've got things about equality, you've got things about gender, you've got things about um, you know, no, uh, no hunger, you can think about sort of nutritional issues within that as well. Um, so they're all linked and they are the global goals. So I'm just gonna try and stop the share now, back to this. Um, so this next section uh, is basically gonna be one big quiz. So if you've not got a pen and paper to hand or something that you can jot something down on, now's the time to run and grab something um, or jot it in your computer or phone or something somewhere. Um, because I want to explore a little bit about what sustainability is at UOG and there are, to do that, rather than to just talk at you, um, I'm gonna, yeah, as I say, do it as a bit of a quiz and the quiz has got um, three and a half rounds, I think. Um, and each one will pick apart a little bit about, a little bit more about um, what we do for sustainability here um, at UOG. So, um is there a way you can all confirm that you've got something you can write something down on maybe give me a thumbs up in the chat or a hand wave yeah real looks good excellent okay so the first round is on um sustainability operations uh, something called sustainability operations and that's kind of things like waste water carbon sort of how we run the estate um at the university and basically our aim in that is always to do less bad stuff. So to reduce carbon emissions, to manage our waste and recycling well, to encourage students to travel in um, smarter and more sustainable ways. So question one, um, and if you write down the answers as we go through, I'll give all of the answers um, at the end and you can keep track of your own um, scores. So question one is how much waste does UOG send to landfill each year? I'll give you this one as a multiple choice. Is it A, 0%, B, 15% or C, 30%? So just scribble your answers down and as I say, I'll go through them at the end. It's completely fine if you don't know and if you're very fast off the mark, then feel free to try and find that online. Um, I, I, won't, I won't stop you from doing that. Um, so hopefully you've written something down. Good. Okay, so question two. How much has UOG reduced its carbon emissions since 2005? And that's up until July of this year, 2020. Is it A, 32%, B, 62% or C, 82%? Okay, next question. So according to last year's travel survey, so every year we um, have to do a travel survey. Uh, it usually goes out in the autumn time. It'll be sort of a little bit later this year because obviously things are a bit different. Um, but we do that to understand how students and staff are traveling to and between campuses each year. Um, and that's a requirement from the local council that we understand that and we try to do more to encourage um, more sustainable travel. Um, so according to last year's travel survey, how many students walked to campus as their main mode of transport? Was it A, 40%, B, 50% or C, 60%? Okay, next question. So this is the last question of the first round now. So on campus, you might have seen, we've got some um, big red British Heart Foundation bins um, and they're basically ways that students um, and staff can um, donate clothes, books, um, kind of charity shop items to charity without having to go down to the charity shop and, and drop them off. So 
there's the big red bins on campus and the question is how many bags did we send to the British Heart Foundation um, last year so obviously everything that goes into the bins they get bagged up in kind of bin bag size bin bin liners um, and they go to um, to the British Heart Foundation how many bags did we send last year when I say last year actually I will clarify I actually don't mean last academic year I mean the year before that because I've taken this from our annual sustainability report for the year 2018-19 um, so was it a 751 b 1126 or c 1596 um, Luke who's just joined us basically we're talking about um, sustainability now at the university and we're doing that through a quiz with three and a bit rounds rather than um, me just kind of telling you um, stuff about the university. So everyone's scribbling their answers down um, as we go and then I'll give all of the answers at the end. Cool. So that was the end of round one. Hopefully you've all got something scribbled down for those five questions. I'll give you a bonus point by the way on that last question. Um, about how many bags we sent, if you can make an approximately near um, guess as to how much the uh, charity gained financially from our donations of those bags. So if you can put down a figure you, you think that uh, uh, they, they gained from that, that would be great. Luke, no worries. Nice to kind of, nice to have you here, even, even briefly, that's, that's great. Um, okay, so we're going on to round two now, and round two is about student experience in sustainability. So some of the um, programs that are offered for uh, you as individuals and you as sports teams and societies to, to get involved in. Uh, so the first question is about our um, Live Smart Challenge. So I'm actually just going to interject and show you a quick slide to give you a little bit of context on um, Live Smart, and then I will ask you the question. So let me just see if I can reshare this. Okay. Okay, so on this slide is just a few things uh, about our Live Smart program. So Live Smart is our sort of student-led program, and um, it was kind of it kind of came about because um, we worked with a small group of students who uh, we tasked to go off and ask other students, what is it you most care about? What do you most, what are you worried about? What do you care about? And they came back and they said things like, um, we're worried about being broke. Our student loan doesn't go far enough. It's hard to get part-time jobs. We're under a lot of pressure to balance those with our studies. Uh, they said things like, we're worried about our well-being. Um, again, lots of kind of social pressures, academic pressures. Um, you know, it's constantly tough um, being at uni. Um, and they were also saying things like, well, we've come to a new place. We want to feel part of the community here at the university, but we also want to feel part of our community in Cheltenham and Gloucester and um, wider Gloucestershire. So um, these students and, and subsequent students have kind of um, helped us evolve this, uh, created what we now call the Live Smart Programme. And that's about helping um, all students to live in smarter ways that boost their well-being save them money and connect them with their local communities at the same time as protecting the planet. Um, because we tended to find that there were very few people who say, oh, we don't care about the planet and we don't care about people, but actually sometimes there are just so many kind of um, immediate concerns that it's hard to engage with that bigger picture. So Live Smart is trying to make the links to the benefits to you as an individual, um, as well as the, the benefits to the bigger global picture. So that program offers um, a series of um, like practical tips, things you can do to um, benefit in those ways. Um, and you can see those on our blog, which I'll show you later. Um, it also offers um, various events. So you can see a few of them on the slide here. On the left, we've got uh, a photo from the pizza party that we ran in the Edible Garden a couple of years ago. We're keen to do another one. Basically, as soon as restrictions change, we will um, find a way to open that space up and get some food involved. On the top right you can see um, an event we ran in the um, SUD Stressable, uh, making smoothies, encouraging active and healthy travel, thinking about local and healthy food. Um, and in the bottom right you can see a doctor 
bike event where if you've got a bike um, you can bring it along and we'll get it fixed for free um, for you so that you can ride um, safely as a, as a form of sustainable um, and active transport. But the question um, in this quiz is really more about the um, two images in the middle and these two images in the middle are from our Live Smart Community Challenge last year and the aim of the Live Smart Challenge is basically to connect individual students or groups of students with community groups to do something good for one or more of the um, global goals that I showed you earlier. We had all sorts of different entries. The two you can see here, um, the top one I'm sure you will have all heard about last year, um, and that was the um, Cheltenham Climate Strike, which was organised by Yolanda and the Green Team Society. Um, and the bottom one was um, an event that these students ran to kind of raise awareness of um, health and well-being and signposting people to places that they could get help for, for that um, and also reminding people that connecting with nature actually scientifically um, helps to be boost people's well-being. So the, um, the million dollar quiz question that goes with that is how many students took part in the Live Smart challenge last year? Um, this one isn't multiple choice, I just want you to have a bit of a guess um, how many you think took part. Are there any virtual events happening at the moment for Live Smart? Um, that's a very good question, Alex. So at the moment we are in the process of recruiting our new Live Smart coordinator. So this will be a student that will lead on our events and activities. Um, and uh, one of their tasks will be to launch the Live Smart Challenge, um, which this year will be happening virtually. So you'll be able to kind of connect with them, use your skills with um, local community groups, but the types of projects that will be offered will be things that you can do um, in, the, in the virtual space. So that's definitely one thing. We'll also do more online things through our social media. So um, earlier on in lockdown, we ran something called Live Smart at Home. Um, and we did sort of various um, Instagram quizzes and interactive things that way. Um, and yes, we will be looking to do, to do other things as well. Um, in addition to getting people to, in small safe groups, um, get involved with some of our gardening and growing spaces on campus. So our FCH Herbal Garden and our um, allotment space at Park. So if anyone's got any ideas for virtual events um, for Live Smart, uh, we'd really love to hear them. And we'll see, we're keen to collaborate with um, societies and sports teams. So again, as soon as we've got that student in post to um, develop and lead those, um, I'm sure they would really, really like to have a conversation with um, any of you about ways that they can collaborate in the virtual space to do things that are um, around Live Smart's core themes. So that was the, yeah, the question on the Live Smart Challenge, just take a guess on how many students took part. And then a question on the Cheltenham Climate Strike, which was obviously um, one of the winning entries to the challenge last year. How many approximately people do you think got involved um, in that strike on that day? Again, just take a guess. Okay, hopefully you got something written down. Okay, so I sort of alluded to this one a little bit earlier. Um, and that's that we've got an edible garden space at FCH and that's kind of tucked behind what used to be Shaftesbury Hall. Um, so if you're kind of uh, on the St Paul's roadside, you're facing campus, the edible garden's kind of on the far right, um, tucked down a side passage. Um, so anybody that wants to be involved, um, let me know and I can point you in the right direction of the people that um, look after that space. But how many, how old is that garden? How long has it been around? Is it a, two years, B, eight years, or C, 12 years. I'll give you a moment to write your scribbles. Okay, so this next question is on Gloss Goes Green. So you um, may be familiar with that program if you've been around um, in the past, but that's a program run by the Students' Union, um, largely run by the Ethical and Environmental Officer. Um, but supported by the rest of the Students Union um, and that's basically encouraging societies and sports teams to take small individual actions to um, become more sustainable uh, and you have to sort of hash use the hashtag hashtag gloss goes green or hashtag gloss goes green too hopefully running from mid-October good to hear Alex um, uh, yeah so you, you compete by using a hashtag um, and 
I want to know who won or which society won um, Glasgow's Green last year because there's a separate society's um, entry and a separate sports team entry. Um, but which society won? And I'll give you three options. Was it A, Tone Radio? Was it B, Universal? Or was it C, the Referee Society? Okay, hopefully you are scribbling something down. And yes, as Alex said, absolutely. Make sure you get involved with that when it launches um, in mid-October. Um, it's a good, it's obviously running through social media, so it's um, even more of a good time to, to sort of start thinking about, about that, perhaps if you're not able to get out as much as you would normally. Good luck with the quiz, everyone. See you later, Luke. Nice to, uh, nice, nice for you to join us. Um, okay, so, <laughs> um, on, on Glasgow's Green, again, as I was mentioning, it all runs through social media and um, you, you use the hashtag. So if um, last year's hashtag was Glasgow's Green 2, because obviously there was just an original Glasgow's Green. So how many um, posts were there on the hashtag Glasgow's Green 2? Is it A, 22, B, 122, or C, 222? Okay, just scribble that down. Uh, George, I think you've just joined us. Hello. Um, basically, we are uh, working through what sustainability at the university looks like, and we're doing that basically as one big quiz. So everyone's writing their answers down as we go along, and then I'll go through all the answers at the end. Uh, so we're just coming to the end of round two. Okay, so the final question is about one of our uh, academic projects and sustainability. So broadly speaking, what our team, uh, sustainability team at the university does, um, there are two things. There's the do less bad stuff. So that was a lot of the operational stuff that I mentioned in round one. And then there's the do more good stuff. Um, and that's a lot of the things that I've mentioned in this round. And the do more good stuff is about helping students and staff as well. Um, to develop skills to create change for sustainability. So it's more than just knowing about sustainability issues and talking about sustainability issues. It's actually about, well, how do we fundamentally change those things? Um, so it's understanding how systems work. It's kind of thinking more about the future um, and stuff like that. So it's about applying your knowledge um, to create change. So this particular project, um, is called LIFT and that's about working with course teams to embed sustainability into um, the core curriculum. Uh, if some, some of your courses may well have um, been involved in some of these projects but my question is what does LIFT stand for? That's L-I-F-T and it's an acronym for the program's full title. So just make, make your guess. I'll give you a clue, L is learning. So if you can guess the other letters, um, or you know the other letters, that's great. Okay, so that's the end of round two. Hopefully you've got stuff um, scribbled down. Uh, so we're on to round three, which is the final kind of full round. Um, and that's, this round is about people and profile so about um, our team here and about kind of awards and things that have got us profile so hopefully you all know that we are the number one most sustainable university in the uk um, and you'll find out a bit more about that in this round as well so uh my first question again i'm just going to do a quick screen share for this one uh, so bear with one moment yes okay great so on the screen here now you should be able to see 13 different categories and these are the 13 different categories of the people and planet university league um, which i mentioned before is the league that we're top of so we had to do well across um, as many of these categories as possible um, in order to become top of that league. Now, on some of these categories, we scored really well. On some of them, there's still quite a lot we can do to improve. 
Um, and you can see they cover some environmental things, but they also cover um, lots of other things as well. So my first question I want to know is, what do you think we scored best on? And I'll give you a clue, we scored 100% on more than one of these categories. Um, but I just want you to scribble down the number or numbers of the categories that you think we will have scored the best on. Okay, hopefully you've written something down. Okay, because my next question is, which category do you think we scored the worst on? Um, and if there aren't any kind of joint worsts. There is one particular category we did least well on. Um, so if you could guess what that category is, that would be great. Okay, I'm gonna just stop that share. Okay, hopefully got something down. Okay, so another one of our um, pieces of profile, if you like, every year we enter something called the UK Green Gown Awards, and they are um, sustainability awards essentially for um, the higher and further education sector. Um, and last year we were shortlisted in two categories for those awards. Um, I want you to see if you can have a guess as to what those categories might be or maybe you saw them on um, my gloss uh, last year as well or on our social media um, just scribble down what you think they might be Okay, so the next question is, uh, I mean, if you got the last question, then uh, this one will be a bit easier, but we actually won one of those two categories that we were shortlisted in. Uh, so your next question is to, to write down which category you think we won in. Okay, and the final question in this round, I'm just gonna do a quick screen share again. Um, there we go, okay. So there is a small team of core staff who work with other staff as well as very closely with students across the university to deliver our sustainability program. Um, I'm one of them, obviously. Um, I want you to try and name who the others are. Um, if you're fast on Google or you're fast on our website, then you can find out um, and you're completely welcome to do that. I'll give you a few seconds to do that. Um, but on the left you can see the four core um, staff members and on the right obviously you see me again but you also see um, our student role um, so if you want to write that down as well um, names and job roles I'll give you a point for each Okay, so uh, that's the end of that round. I um, th this this next round's not really round, but you can have it as a kind of a bonus question because it helps to segue into the next section. Although I will go through very quickly the answers to uh, the quiz before we go on to the next um, the next bit. But this question is: Which Premier League football club or clubs? Actually, there's there's a few joint first places here. Um, are the most um, predominantly environmentally sustainable according to um, the BBC last year.
Okay, so I'm going to run through the answers. One of them makes a cracking cake. Okay, um, so I'm going to run through the answers really quickly. Um, mark your own. Um, and at the end, uh, feel free to pop your score in the chat. Just be really interesting to see like, you know, who, who knew what. Um, I'm going to trust you on your marking not to, uh, not to make it up afterwards. Um, but I'll just very quickly go through the answers. So in round one, uh, we were talking about the university's sustainability operations. So things like waste, water, carbon, how we do less of the bad stuff. Um, and my question was, how much waste does UOG send to landfill each year? The correct answer is 0%. Um, that's because we um, reduce our waste as much as possible and recycle as much as possible. And then any remaining waste doesn't go to landfill. It actually goes to um, a control facility where it's burned. Um, the energy um, and the heat generated is used to power homes. Um, and any residual ash is used um, in, in creating roads. Um, so we're zero waste to landfill. Question two was how much has UOG reduced its carbon emissions since 2005? The correct answer is 62%, um, although this last year's figures are slightly skewed by COVID because actually we've not been on campus so much and that has meant that we have used a little bit less energy. Um, but a key project for us over this coming academic year is to develop a new um, carbon management plan, um, which hopefully will drive us to go net zero in our carbon emissions um, by the year 20. 30 or 2035. Um, so if you or any of your teams, societies, anybody that you know wants to be involved in helping us develop that, then obviously do drop me a line. We're keen, very keen to hear the student views. So the next question was, according to the travel survey, how many students walked to campus as their main mode of transport? The correct answer is 40%. Um, obviously some do cycle. There are still some that use single use cars, some that have to obviously. Um, we're trying to reduce that as much as possible. Um, and we're trying to do more to encourage cycling um, and other forms of active um, and sustainable transport. How many bags did we send to the British Heart Foundation? The correct answer is 1,596. Um, and if you got within 2,000 pounds of the um, amount that it came to, I'll give you, uh, I'll give you the bonus point. Um, the amount raised was 29,764 pounds. So on to round two, which was on student experience. I asked you how many students were actively involved in the Live Smart Challenge last year. Um, the correct answer is 19. Um, some of those worked together, some of those worked on their own. Um, uh, and that was a growth from the first year where we piloted the challenge. Um, the Green Team's climate strike attracted how many people? Um, that was, we think, roughly a thousand. Um, so it's quite impressive. Um, how old is the FCH Edible Garden? It's 12. Which society won Gloss Goes Green last year? The correct answer is Tone Radio. Uh, how many hashtags on Gloss Goes Green 2? The correct answer is 122. And what does LIFT stand for? It's our Learning Innovation for Tomorrow programme. So the people and profile round. Uh, question one on which categories did we score best? Um, there were several of them. Um, you can go to the on the People and Planet um, website. There is uh, the link to the University League, and there you can see our full um, scorecard. We got 100% for auditing and EMS. We got 100% for carbon management. We got 100% for sustainable food, and 100% for carbon reduction. Um, and the category we did least well on was workers' rights. Um, and just quickly to clarify, basically, when we say workers' rights, we mean um, not just the rights of our employees here at Uni of Gloss, uh, but um, the rights of the employees in the supply chains um, as well. So like if we buy a piece of IC equipment, other people in those supply chains uh, pay fairly. And that's again something that you can think about as uh, sports teams and societies will look um, quickly at in a minute. Um, but if you're buying things, uh, where have they come from? Are people paid properly? Are they sourced fairly? Um, what's the impact of transporting them across the country? Could you use local suppliers and um, things like that? I understand your new um, sports kit, kit is, is quite sustainable as well. Um, I think they maybe also supply Forest Green Rovers or, or other big kind of sustainable um, clubs. Uh, so they're starting to think a bit more about all the materials that are used in making them, the labor and so on. 
Um, so that was those. And then in terms of the our kit, mostly made from recycled water bottles. Great, exactly. Um, so that's a very good example there from, from sports. Um, so the, in the sustainability team, very quickly, we've got me, I'm the sustainability engagement manager. We've got Alex Ryan, who is our director of sustainability. She oversees the whole program. We've got John Furley, who's our sustainability operations manager. He looks after the kind of the carbon, the waste, the water, those sorts of things. Um, and then we've got Barbara Rainbow, who's our coordinator. And our current student role is um, Nikki Rimmel. Barbara makes good cake. Yes, <laughs> she does. Um, she always enters the um, SU Bake Off. Um, so yeah, she really does like her baking. Um, and our student role, yes, is, is Nikki um, Rimmel and she looks after our social media and comms. So she'll be a great person to collaborate with if you're um, sharing sustainability things on social media. I'm sure she'll um, want to uh, sort of send you a direct message on that one. Um, okay, and the bonus point for um, uh sort of sustainable football club now again um you know i take the bbc's source on this one they ranked um clubs on things like clean energy energy efficiency sustainable transport um water those sorts of things and the clubs that came out top on this very sort of simple and crude um, one point per section um, uh, league the top clubs were arsenal manchester city manchester united and tottenham hotspur um, so if you've got any or all of those, then uh, you can have a point. So um, if we get half or uh, you can have a point for each. Yes, I'll, I'll give you that. Um, that's fine too. Okay, so I'm conscious that we started a bit late, but I also don't want to finish too late um, because, I'm, I, you know, we are getting on for uh, quarter past two now. Obviously, if anybody does need to urgently get off, do um this will continue recording uh, but i will try and wrap definitely within the next um 10 minutes so um this next section is thinking about how all of these things are or could be built into your roles as societies and as um sports teams so i want to first of all think about what your core activities are as societies and sports teams because um, real success with sustainability is not just um, it's not just a bolt-on activity um, and it's also not just an activity that's ever going to succeed if only we as individuals um, make small changes so obviously yeah I mean I could for example I could be somebody who you know likes to recycle and um, I don't know carries my sustainable water bottle everywhere but I also could be the CEO of BP or something so my core business the place where I could make maximum impact um, you know on the global systems and the global choices um, is my sort of you know working environment in that example um, and actually my reusable water bottle kind of pales into insignificance there but you know your kind of core um, collective roles here are as sports teams and as societies so I want you to just drop a quicker thoughts into the chat on what are the sort of main things you regularly do um, together in your groups so for example it could be things like um, holding socials it could be things like um getting sponsorship so if you could just drop a couple of thoughts of things you regularly do as groups and societies um into the chat that would be really useful i'll just give you a quick minute to do that Get one more in the chat, maybe. Uh, okay, we'll start with sponsorship. That's that's a great one. Um, so some ones that I had on my list, I had um, social activities. So. Um, Oh, here we go. Uh, we have tennis balls that are no longer the best. We contact. Oh, I love that. That's great, Zach. Very good. We should do a social media story on that and um, and get that shared because I think that's a really nice nice little story there. Um, so yeah, so thinking about some of your core 
uh, activities, yeah, you've got your socials. So maybe it's thinking about like, if you're gonna have like a, uh, like a costume themed social, where does that costume come from? Um, are you always buying a sort of a cheap, ready-made costume from the um, fancy dress shop, uh, which, you know, you don't necessarily know where it's been made, what it's made of, if people are paid fairly, um, and then what are you going to do with it afterwards? Do you chuck it out or, you know, do you reuse it? Um, so you could start thinking about, okay, can you get your um, social outfits from, from charity shops? Can you repurpose outfits? Can you um, kind of do them up and, and that sort of thing to, uh, you know, to lower the impact of, of that particular night in, uh, night in on Zoom <laughs> uh, or, or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, you could also think about, um, so another kind of core thing is about, you know, your committee structure. Who's on your committee? Do you have a good and broad um, representation on that committee? So you'll remember one of the global goals was around gender equality. One of them was about reducing inequalities. Are the ways that you can uh, promote opportunities to, to engage um, in committee roles that um, help to make them more open and engage, you know, more ethnically diverse people or, um, you know, more of the LGBT plus community. And, you know, maybe, for example, you could collaborate with the LGBT plus society and ask them to advise you on um, the communications that you're putting out um, about running for roles on committee and stuff and say, well, actually, does this sound inclusive to you? How could we tweak it? Um, and the same for, for example, um, we've got a, a black and ethnic minority um, network at the university. We've also got um, an Afro-Caribbean society. You know, there are other sort of student societies and groups that um, would be able to help advise you on, can we make our comms more inclusive? And that could be a really interesting um, project that you could work together on um, even without having to sort of meet physically this year. Um, so another one, yep, somebody put in here, you're looking for sponsorship. So sponsorship and thinking about, well, am I working with somebody who shares my values? So, you know, if your values are sustainability or your values are about um, inclusivity, reducing inequalities, you know, these sorts of things, do you really want to be working with somebody who, you know, would you want your sponsor to be a big oil company, for example, or, you know, um, your sponsor to be somebody who has been uh, seen on Twitter making um, racially inappropriate uh, comments. So it's kind of thinking carefully um, about that. And also um, on the flip side of that, you know, if you are kind of um, doing things that are sustainable, this is actually a really great opportunity for you to um, use that as a leverage to get people's attention. So now, for example, we are the most sustainable university. We're finding that more and more businesses are coming to us and saying, we want to work with you because you're the most sustainable university. So there are some opportunities there where you could be more sustainable and use that as a kind of an added extra to get people interested in, in working with you. Um, and then we've got um, social media. So um, obviously, if you are at home more at the moment, potentially there's an opportunity for running uh, a bit of a social media campaign about sustainability in your sports team or in your um, core society theme area. So um, either Excellent, very good Giovanni. Um, either in the chat or at the end, I'll just ask Alex to probably email these out, but I've got a few um, good links for you that you probably um, might want to have a look at. So things like the Green Sports Alliance, um, the, the UN have got a bit of a toolkit on embedding sustainability in sport um, and working with the global goals. So I'll make sure that those are sort of sent over to you and you could maybe have a think about once you've looked at those, other ways that you could maybe run a bit of an awareness campaign about what the actual core issues are for sustainability um, in your sport kind of more widely and what you can uh, do to improve that. So I'm conscious of the time and obviously I will send over all of these um, questions, all of these links um, and things afterwards so that you can ha have a proper look through them. Um, but the last kind of thought I want to leave you with is kind of returning back to um, the Live Smart Challenge that I mentioned as part of the quiz and as I say we are going to launch that very soon to um, encourage individuals and groups to um, buddy up with a local community organisation to do something good for one of the goals um, in a sort of a virtual space 
um, and it, it could be interesting for you as your society or sports team to think, okay, so what, what could I do that would help the local community? What skills have I got? Um, and, and how could I use that you know, during this particular time at the moment? Um, so it could be, for example, that you, I don't know, plot a, a sort of um, a walking in nature route or something like that. Or maybe you, um, you know, you do a, if you're perhaps a sporty group, perhaps you share some tips on, well, how can you um, get fit and active and, you know, while you're gardening. So there's something called the active um, the active gym or something like that um, and or active gardening gym I think it's called um, and that's because it's scientifically proven that um, being active and engaging with nature both um, improve your well-being so it's all about kind of exercising in the everyday um, so you know maybe within your own sports are the ways that you can exercise within the within the everyday and could you do that with a you know could you do that to um, target a particular community group or give back to the community in a particular way um, so I will uh, obviously be sharing that um, in the next sort of few weeks through our social media. So if you're not following us on social media, that's a really good thing to do. Um, I'm going to quickly share you um, a slide with our social media handles on. Um, but also when I send over these sort of external links to um, you know, sport advice and things like that um, to Alex afterwards, hopefully he can also share with you uh, the link to our website and also the link to our uh, Listmart blog. Um, because on there you can find all sorts of um, tips and things. So I'll just quickly share with you this slide. Um, it's very slow to respond when I screen share. Let's just have a think. There we go. Um, so here we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Um, and you can also see here the link to our main sustainability website um, where you can find out all about sustainability at the university and ways to be involved and you can also um, check out our LibSmart blog um, which is a good starting point as well for simple things that you can do to benefit you but also protect the planet um, so yeah do um, do have a look at that okay so we are kind of nearing the end um, I'm conscious this was a 45 minute session so I don't want to over keep you but if you have any questions obviously pop them in the chat or just unmute and ask me I'm very happy to respond to those and as I say I will send those links over to Alex to um, back up when he sort of shares this afterwards got to go to another meeting apologies thanks for coming Charlotte really nice to have you here um, if you want to drop your score in the chat that'd be interesting but feel free to, to run away if you need to um, anybody else any other questions or they just want to share how well or badly or um, and think they did at the quiz then that's um, only six that's still pretty good Charlotte it was a very tough quiz um, so yeah anybody any questions I will just stick around for a couple of minutes um, got six two there you go there you go um, but I bet you learned more than six so that's also always good got five very good everyone's pretty similar that's completely fine Okay, well, if no one's got any more questions, then I will uh, probably leave you with Alex. And um, uh, Alex, I'll make sure you get those links as well. Um, I really thought more people walked to uni, that's good. Um, yeah, I will um, send you over some stuff, Alex, and then hopefully you can just share that with the um, recording afterwards. Would that be all right? Yeah, that's absolutely fine, Miriam. What I'm doing is I'm putting all of our training sessions onto like one central hub. So I'll do like a little, with all the links and stuff that you've put through as well Brilliant. just a big thank you again for running that session there's a lot like the quiz i was i was pondering on some of the questions i, I managed to get eight but um pretty good yeah um, I, but, I always love a good quiz for learning because you you sort of uh you wouldn't always take it in otherwise and then you have a moment of being like actually hmm, i learned something yeah the football the football one stumped me because i was like well forest green rovers are the most sustainable football club but then they're not premier league Premier League, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly it yeah Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much, Miriam. Like I said, I'll post this up. Uh, thank you for those that have joined us. If you didn't manage to join us, but you're watching this as a review, if you do have any questions, obviously, Miriam, I'm sure you're happy to take any emails Absolutely. that come through yeah. as well. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Um, I'll let you know when our next training session will be um, in the coming weeks. Okay, thank you very much. Okay.